Hi, and welcome to the New Trust Economy. I'm Monica Profit, and I'm here with Alexander Kapitonov. He's associate professor and co-founder of several blockchain initiatives and projects. He's a serial entrepreneur, and I'm very excited to have him on to talk about Aerolab and Robonomics, his two most current projects. Welcome, Alexander. Um, thank you for presentation, Monica. Nice to meet you, too. Okay, and let's start to discuss really difficult stuff uh, about robots and how it will be integrated in our everyday life. Yes, that is a huge, um, it's not only a blockchain issue and an AI issue, but it's a social issue, it's a political issue, it's something that people are talking about all the way from the World Economic Forum, all the way down to, you know, my cousin who works on, a, on an oil rig out in the Gulf of Mexico is thinking about how a robot could take his job away. So I think this is a, this is a huge reaching uh, topic, and I'm excited to talk about the specific applications that I've seen, some examples that you've been working on specifically, but also really broadly, it looks like you've got a very, a very broad reach. Do you want to talk a little bit about Aerolab and how you got started there? Yes, of course. Uh, actually, we started that project uh, several years ago. Uh, it was, uh, I, I think, uh, the key point uh, uh, was uh, the first phase of uh, initial coin offering where we took uh, the 5,000 efforts. It was uh, May of uh, 2017, if I'm right, yeah. That was a good, that was a good month, a good time for, uh, to be taking Ethereum. Definitely, so. definitely, it was a really good time. And, and so when you uh, took that money, that in, uh, what did you do to preserve it? Did you move it to a stable coin right away or did you leave it in Ether to then deplete and de degrade again when the, when the price went down? We still have uh, some efforts on the um, consortium smart contract. It's uh, like a root contract for the company uh, when we, how we control the uh, cash flow and uh, all processes inside the company, but uh, but we stayed in efforts like <laughs> never cashed. Okay, good, good question. Okay, thank you, thank you for that answer. So, out of Aerolab, as you were getting going with that, how did you end up having Robonomics drop out of it? Can you talk a little bit about you know what you were trying to solve with Aerolab and how Robonomics dropped out of it secondarily? Yes, uh, it, it's uh, definitely a long story, and uh, it was started 2015. Uh, we started with uh, experiments with the drones, because uh, the drone, it's a first simple system uh, which can be uh, fully autonomous right now. Yes. There is yes. no problem, only prob problems with the law. As we are still waiting for the good uh, rules for the flights and uh, for the communication and between the drones and so you and were so really working so specifically on drone technologies uh, initially, but then you saw that there was yes. really blockchain play in here. Uh, it, it was uh, it was started with the drones and blockchain together. This is the initial idea because uh, my friends and co-founder Sergei Lonshakov. Uh, he's a really good uh, professional in uh, blockchain. Uh, he started to work with the blockchain uh, in 2011. And uh, I work with the uh, mobile robotics and the drones from 2009. And it's, it was a really big experience from both sides. That's why we start uh, to work uh, for solutions using blockchain for robots. Great. But after so that, uh, yes, after that, we saw that drones uh, not only single application for the blockchain, it can be used for the communication and uh, information exchange uh, between uh, different autonomous systems like smart factories and Internet of Things. 
So now that you got to Smart Factories and Internet of Things, that's exactly where I was leading. So there is a really cool YouTube clip that you have um, about a smart vending machine. Can you talk a little bit about, first of all, um, that, that clip is so helpful, but can you summarize it a little bit? And then let me know, how did you decide that that was the best, easiest way to explain um, your AI and blockchain solution to you know just the first average user? How did you land on the vending machine? Uh, it's actually, this is not a new idea because uh, before that, uh, Nick Zabo described a similar machine, uh, but it, it was related with uh, some bank system, if I am right. But uh, the principle uh, was the same. And uh, after uh, like several thinking, we are just found that uh, right now vending machine uh, can be fully autonomous. It, it can pay for itself, for the rent, for the electricity, uh, estimate the uh, goods, what is needed right now and for the estimate for for example for season goods something like this it's it's really not so complex to make it so but, you picked it because uh, it was a simple way to explain how technology yes. is going to come in and really change the way that that even machines that we've come to understand very well historically are going to be upgraded through ai uh in this way, uh, the blockchain technology makes uh, possible uh, the economical freedom for machines. So can you talk uh, a little bit about that? Blockchain makes possible economic freedom for machines. That's a really interesting statement. That what is, that's almost like a, a tweetable right there. What, can you explain yes, that a little yes, bit? Yes, definitely. It's, uh, actually, it's a mind-blowing idea, in my opinion, of course. But, uh, I think in the future we will see some uh, really autonomous services which can be uh, can uh, um, earn the money and uh, spend it for itself or buy something. Uh, but uh, before, uh, only the bank system can can be used for the money exchange uh, with the digital money, and there is a impossible uh, to create the account for your machine. You can create an account for yourself and delegate it to machine, right. but it's a little bit unsafe. A and as you can remember, uh, the movie Bicentural Man, there is, was a scene where a robot asked for the bank account. Exactly. And, uh, uh, yes, and the bank officer asked why? And Robert said that I want to pay rent, I want to pay, uh, buy goods, and so on and so on. There is a same uh, thing. Right now, robots can be uh, uh, economically free and uh, use their wallets by itself. Because uh, right now we have uh, the infrastructure, we have the solutions, uh, to create the hardware wallets that can be hacked or uh, it can, for example, be destroyed if somebody wants to open right. it or something and things, like that. things become a lot safer once you include blockchain technology and something yes. like that. Absolutely, absolutely. They also become hack proof for the for any other robot oriented hack as well. It just becomes completely hack proof, which is pretty incredible. Um, you know, so you're talking about what um, some of these really interesting blockchain and AI kind of components are. We're going from drones to robots in general to uh, virtual uh, to vending machines. Sorry, and um, I have to wonder how did you end up wanting to make a robot artist that I mean my background is in art and and I was I was a working artist for many years I've worked with thousands of artists my last company was an arts and culture company and the last thing I would ever thought that the future was going to hold was a robot artist the in a viable sense so tell me how did you come up with the idea um, the thinking way uh, was next uh, we uh, 
searching for the simple solution where the robots uh, where robots can uh, produce the final product and in the case of uh, robot artist or robot painter in our case uh, the final paint it's a product yeah and that's true. robot a robot can sell it if a, wall, yeah, if a robot market. has its own wallet, a robot can now have an economy, even a creative economy. So yes. have you had any, have any luck um, selling or with your robots selling art yet? Yes. Uh, when it starts the new picture, yeah. uh, the auction started parallel and uh, you can make a bid. And uh, if your bid will be enough, the biggest one you will uh, buy this picture for and your And what bid. what have they what have they gone for how much have they have they ended up being bid for oh uh the, the like the maximum or uh, maximum price it yeah. was uh something right now it was uh like a five efforts if i'm right uh, uh i think so <laughs> And can you talk about what um, efforts were? What what five ethers you're talking about in, in current in um, current cost or in a previous valuation of ethers? Uh, no, it, it was uh, the maximum the maximal bid uh, during uh, one auction. Uh, oh. I don't know which one. But was it uh, while ether was very highly priced or very or is much more different? Oh, uh, it it was uh, in the end of December. Oh, okay, was, okay. Yeah. Uh, and, not, not so high. <laughs> yeah, not so high. December 2018, right? 2017. Yeah. <laughs> totally different. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And why did you decide that you wanted to um, kind of bridge um, a robotic approach and, and, and art itself? Was it really just for the engagement with commerce or was it for a larger philosophical reason? Uh, look at this. Uh, right now, uh, all power uh, concentrated in the single hands the hands of service providers. For example, as you can see, situation with the Facebook yeah. and what they are doing with your data. Uh, and uh, in our vision, uh, with the blockchain technology, uh, you can own your information by yourself. Yeah. And you can decide, you, do you wanna sell your information or not? And what kind of? And uh, it's uh, the same because uh, the it's uh, not a big difference between the information from the machines and from the people. Because uh, if, you, if so something acting in the real world and producing some information, it can be used for the future proposals and uh, some uh, models. So was it really just to challenge the idea that things have to be human generated? No. Uh, in the future, uh, I think uh, the like information ge generated by humans will be like a, maybe like a money. Yeah. Right. We, 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 it will be really short term, but uh, the robots they should uh, learn for and use some database for that and uh, like for the uh, training the data set yeah they can use uh, the information from people so what is your what's the reason why for yourself why are you so compelled by distributed technologies and and artificial intelligence in general why are you why yes. is that interesting to you uh, in, Continue my idea, uh, what I started before. Uh, the, right now, the information concentrated uh, in the single head. And uh, the distributed technologies can uh, break the rule yeah. and uh, give back the, the information and the control on the information flow to ourselves. Uh, and uh, this is, in my opinion, of course, it's really important that yeah. uh, 
Is that, it about, is it about in, empowerment of the individual? Is that what you're really trying to see or the empowerment of the robotic individual? How do you see that, that kind of playing out? And is that part of why you're so interested? Uh, in my, uh, in my opinion, uh, in the future, we will see, uh, something like, uh, um, biological mechanical, uh, structure, not, not just a human separately from the robots, but human and robot like a common, uh, structure. That's why, uh, the, Infor, uh, information uh, to own the information about that structure should bring uh, uh, the real profit for itself. That is so interesting. That is that's really fascinating. Um, <laughs> so I can see how you know you're bringing a blockchain play to this is is part and parcel to making your technology really. Um, even function and, and be all that it can be. It really wouldn't work if it was centralized in any way. And I really, I just appreciate you talking a bit about Robonomics and how um, AirLab, AeroLab, is it AeroLab or AeroLab? AeroLab. 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 All right. Autonomous Intelligent Robot Agent. Oh, Autonomous Intelligent Robot Agent Lab. Okay. Yes. I got it. AeroLab. Because agent, like separate yeah. economical agent. <laughs> yeah. So I have to ask you, what time is it there right now? It's, it's only three in the afternoon, my time. I'm in New York. Where are you? Uh, in St. Petersburg, Moscow. And what oh, time is it there right cool. now? Sorry, Moscow. Sorry. St. Yeah. St. Petersburg, Petersburg, Russia. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I'm just. Uh, yeah, you must be tired. What time is it there? Oh, it's 1130. All right, in the evening. That's, that's very yes, late. Yes. So, but it, it's okay. We are working the really whole day because we have uh, the colleagues yeah. from San Francisco. They're just oh, right. uh, start uh, several hours before well, they start I, their work. And I was going to ask you. Hmm? Actually, one of our colleagues uh, today going to uh, take the award. Award. Um, but uh, the name of the competition just uh, I, I, I actually really forget the name but that's alright, that's okay <laughs> we are uh, in the one uh, line with uh, Microsoft and IBM company <laughs> Uh, it's really cool. Uh, very cool. Very cool. So you're doing a lot of work with people on the West Coast. And I'm wondering, are you personally more of a morning person or a night person? <laughs> it's do you, do you really function best or do you prefer to stay up late or do you prefer to work early and get up early? Um, <laughs> sometimes. It, it it's actually depends from the weather. Really, it depends on the weather. So, what kind of weather makes you want to stay up late at night? Because uh, in Saint Petersburg, uh, and it, it winter, it's uh, pretty uh, the the big part of t of the time, daytime. It's uh, like uh, close to night because it's winter nights, and uh, in, during summer, it's uh, like uh, the sunshine all the day oh <laughs> like my gosh 24 yeah. hours yes oh it's like alaska we let's like our alaska for yes sure. yeah but not not so strong but yeah it's almost kind, kind of too yes almost that's crazy so yeah, you don't really have a preference on the on the weather if you are on the the time of day that you work you're not really a morning person or night person um i think so yes yeah. it, it depends the from person. the uh, work uh, size of the work because uh, some, sometimes you are really busy and uh, sometimes less busy and you you can continue uh, awake uh, some like for two or three hours three a.m. I mean. and it can just feel like it might as well be three p.m. because it's just as dark, right? Yes, but yeah, yeah. That's but hard. for for example, today I'm um, wake up early and <laughs> and you're uh, up late. Already, <laughs> yes. Yeah. And it's already uh, 11. 
Yeah. Well, I want to thank you so much for taking the time to be on the podcast and give me a little more information about your companies. And I wish you the best. We're going to include links uh, just below this. And so anybody who wants to check it out, it'll be right there. Also, you can find us at newtrusteconomy.com. Thank you again, Alexander. It was wonderful having you. Thank you, Monica. Let's make the future close right now. And we should integrate robotic inside our society. Absolutely. All right. Well, thank you so much. And I'll catch you you. next time on the New Trust Economy.